What does High Ridge think about women in ministry? Well, we think it's great. <laughs> Next question. No, let me, I want to I teach on this. So, um, culture changes all the time about all kinds of things. Culture is rapidly changing. Culture has ebbed and flowed on this for forever. Uh, we're actually coming out of a cultural season where uh, things were, were uh, prior to the world wars, things were kind of quiet for women. But when so many men lost their lives in the wars, women stepped up to more, and that started to change in our culture. But what does the Word of God say? And, and it gives some clarity, but we also have to have some cultural understanding. We can't do without it on, on some issues. You have to understand what the backdrop was on some issues to understand what the heart of God is. So I'll go ahead and give you one of the verses that says they shouldn't be in ministry. Go ahead and give you this. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 34. Women should be silent during the church meetings. It is not proper for them to speak. They should be submissive just as the law says. So let me, let me give you a, a, a little background. It would take an hour for me to describe to you how corrupt the Greco-Roman culture was. It would take a long time for me to describe to you, so this is written to the church in Corinth, which was in the realm of Athens in Greece. It would take me probably an hour to define for you all the wickedness connected with the false god, Athenia. So many crazy things connected. One of the things was, was that the women in public places were to announce their sensuality and produce their, their, their sexuality by shouting at men and making public invitations for them to come have sexual intercourse with them. And this carried over even into the temple, such that when, when, when the gatherings would take place in the temple, those who, who were devoted to, to the goddess Athenia would come in and they would shout in the temple. Well, so thousands begin to get saved in the city of Corinth. Changes are taking place. And it didn't just happen overnight. It takes a while sometimes for culture to change. And so you've got these new Christian women coming in and they're trying to get free from the way they used to operate, but some of it's still kind of carrying over uh, which, by the way, is why we love life groups at High Ridge Church. We love to try to help people meet Jesus, and then we love to try to get them into a setting where they can be loved on and encouraged to get some of the former stuff dealt with. If you haven't been through a life group, I want to tell you you need to go through a life group. It helped me even, being a Christian 40-something years. I went through a life group. It helped me identify things that needed to be dealt with and gotten out of the way. So I would just want to give that plug right there. So Paul is saying, no. No yelling and screaming in here. No drawing attention to yourself. Dress right. Cover yourself up. That's the context. But let's go to another verse of what he spoke of in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I want you to look at this. But a woman who dishonors her head, if she prays or prophesies without a covering on her head, for this is the same as shaving her head. Now, I want to ask you a question. How's anybody going to know if she's praying if she's not talking? You say, well, she could be praying in silence. Okay, so let's go to prophesize. Praying or prophesying. How is anyone going to know she's prophesying if she's not verbalizing? So I'll give you, you can pray silently, but you can't prophesy silently. If I'm sitting here right now prophesying, <laughs> am I prophesying? No, there have to be words. And so what he, what he then spoke here is that there needs to be covering. There needs to be authority. There needs, to be, there needs to be something to evidence that she's not in rebellion, that she's not in the former ways, and that she's not going to yell and scream and draw attention to herself. So in the very same book, the apostle writing to a church with lots of problems, he says, no, they need to be quiet to those who are trying to draw attention to themselves, but to those who were spiritual and had gifting, just to make certain that nobody's confused, keep yourself under authority. And one of the ways that that happened in Corinth was with covering of the head. And so that would be a way in which they could communicate that the attitude of their heart was submitted and not rebellious. In other words, that moment wasn't going to be a, hey, look at me moment. I am woman. Hear me roar. No, Paul's saying, for the Christian women, you don't need to say, I am woman. Hear me roar. You need to say, look at how good God is. And as a matter of fact, I want to speak these words or pray these words to help you see how good God is. So it's really all about an attitude of the heart. It's really about what needs to happen in all of our hearts. So if we we're to take the whole of Scripture, let's just take the five-fold gifts, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Let's just take the five-fold gifts. Do you know that all five of them appear in the Scripture in masculine and feminine gender? You say, really? There are lady apostles? Yes. Junia, Andronicus's wife. Priscilla, Aquila's, Aquila's wife. 
both apostles. Now, how is someone going to be an apostle and not speak? Give you another one. Prophecy. Prophets. The gift of the prophet. Philip's four daughters, read this in Acts chapter 19, were prophetesses. How can they be prophetesses and not speak? We've got to have the cultural context to understand this. For, for uh, evangelist, pastor, teacher, many times you see pastors, uh, it's the word poimen, which means shepherd. Many times you see shepherdesses in Scripture. So it's very important to recognize deacons and deaconesses, both masculine and feminine gender there, only one, only one position in the church does not appear in the feminine gender, and that's the position of elder. So here's what I believe. I believe it's awesome that women are in ministry. We need what God has placed in them. I think it's phenomenal. I don't think we're ever, ever to submit to someone who's of the feminine gender who wants to try to put men in their place and to shame men who aren't doing good enough. Never going to work. Or to draw attention to themselves. Never going to work. Not going to be the way it happens at High Ridge. I'll deal with it. I'll speak to it. Praise God for an awesome submitted one here and other ladies on the platform that love the church and love the Lord and have a blessed spirit, have a blessed heart. So, but I'm not going to ever allow women to be elders. The reason why, check this out in 1 Timothy chapter 3. The apostle teaches about how women have a natural burden for their family and for the home. And I think what the apostle Paul is saying is, is men step up so that they don't have to also carry the burden for the church. They've already got the burden for their biological family. Men, you step up and you take the burden for the spiritual family. You carry the spiritual family like she carries the biological, physiological, nuclear family. And that's why I think you never find, you never find feminine gender connected to elders. And that's why we believe at High Ridge that elders are going to always be men. So here's the takeaway. May all ministry have order and bring peace. It's all awesome. So God bless you ladies. I've been taught some phenomenal things by my mother. I'm so glad she spoke to me including as my Sunday school teacher. I'm glad she spoke in church. So God bless the ladies and may anointing rest upon you in many, many ways.